What is up, chess players? My name is Reese Thompson. I'm a full-time chess coach and candidate master. And in this video, we are trying to raise my rating 2183. And we're going to be playing some blitz. We're going to be playing some 3-2 chess today. Uh, I mostly do rapid chess, but I felt like today, you know, I wanted to play some 3-2. This is a very, very popular time control. I'm going to play some aggressive chess. I feel like I'm kind of underrated, you know, 20, 2183. <sighs> okay. All right. My opponent is going right into a repertoire that I have designed specifically for you guys. So hopefully we will get a very, very fun chess variation today. I'm going to try and um, entice him into playing the, the, um, the Milner Berry Gambit. So yeah, we're going to get into this variation. Now there's a couple of different variations that I want to go for here. The course that I designed has two, the main variation, Knight takes D4 and the Misa Pat variation. Very un, uh, not well known, Knight BD2. Let's play this one, guys. This is a unheard of, uh, not an unheard of move, but a move that can be very, very sneaky. Okay, let's start by playing bishop to e3. I'm going to allow him to capture my pawn. Okay, he didn't go for it. And let's see if he can continue playing well here. Let's go rook c1. And let's go a3. So this idea controls the b4 square. And I'm actually going to start pushing this pawn up the board. These are one of the main lines that I actually show in this course and it's going to be a video course it's going to be free um on lee chess you're going to have access to the study just for being a subscriber to this channel so that should be really really cool and this is actually a very very fun line to play so i would give it a shot this he's going right into kind of the stuff that i looked at at this course and let's see if we can get that so my course my recommendation goes if castles, we play queen to c2, trying to create a weakness on the h7 square. And then after that, uh, after he plays a move like h6, then we swing the queen over to the e2 square. And our concept, we'll probably get it in the game because there's not really any other option here for black. He's got to do something. And, you know, this, this line is actually really, really fun to play, guys. I would g give it a shot. Try this knight d to knight bd2 line it's called the pap variation pap it's named after this gr famous grandmaster and i don't know if he's famous but he was my coach at one point misa pap okay g6 what is this that move looks ugly um the dark squares look like swiss cheese uh in this position so we gotta figure out some way of taking advantage of that let's play let's play now, let's start with bishop h6. Can't be a bad move. And let's go rook e1. Just solidifying everything. I'm going to probably shift my queen over to d2. And maybe over to the f4 square next. Maybe even throw the knight into g5. I'm ready to start making an attack. You might see me, you know, start throwing this h-pawn at the board, you know. Just have some fun, you know. Try and kill the guy, you know. This is a fun position. All of our pieces are in the attack here. So yeah, we're down a pawn, but who cares? So knight to g5, bishop to g5, both of these moves, I'm getting ready to attack them. I would love the exchange of these bishops. This is going to help me create an attack here. It's going to be great. Um, I don't really play a lot of blitz, guys. You know, I'm not a huge blitz player. I prefer rapid, but I do know that it's a big weakness in my game. Like, you know, I need to play. I just don't like playing blitz chess because it's, it feels like I'm, I'm making myself weaker. I play, I play worse moves. Um, but I play, yeah, I mean on the channel, I've only played 10 minute with no increment. So this is probably better for me to play a game with increment because then I don't at least lose just based on the fact that I'm slow. I'm an old man at the, you know, the, the old age of 27. So, um, my opponent's sure taking a lot of time here. You know, really, to be honest, you can't take this long in a 3-2 game. You know, you do have the two-second increment, but you're not you're not some program master that can play, uh, you know, the best moves ever in this position. Okay, let's start with h4. This is a useful move, 
and it gives me the option of playing h5, and I still have the, the bishop on h6 protected. Okay, I don't see any point in putting the bishop on g7. That just <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Um, partly because I can just, you know, start attacking, and I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to go takes in h5. Now I'm getting ready to play h6 and drop the knight in on g5. In general, I want this pawn in h6 because it makes it easier for me to create attacks on his king. You know, the dark squares are going to be weak. And in general, it's going to be nice. It's, it also gives me this g5 square. So let's play queen f4 here. And I'm going to start by playing knight to g5. And maybe you might see me lift this rook up and over at, some, at a certain point. Watch out for the sacrifice on h7 as well here. Okay, my opponent is trying to exchange some pieces off the board, maybe the bishops. I'm not too mad about that. I want to also try and control the square. Maybe, you know what, is a better idea. Maybe it might be a better idea to start trying to shift my focus. You know, as the attacker, we can try and shift our focus sometimes because our pieces are more flexible. I'm going to shift my focus over to the queen side, guys. Queen b6, hitting the knight. I'm going to go f4 to kind of secure everything on the king side. And let's see kind of how we can play this position. f4 to secure the knight. I don't care about this exchange of bishops. It, yes, it's his bad bishop, but I don't really care because my knight's way better than his knight. My knight does something. His knight doesn't. So he's going to try and exchange everything off the board because, well, you know, he's in a bad position. He's cramped. So let's continue here. I can go queen d4. I can also just try and take the c file. That seems really natural. Um, let's think about this here. I could queen c2, knight b6. Maybe I exchanged too many pieces off here. It feels like I did, but, you know, maybe I go queen D. No, I want to I want to keep the C file here, guys. Let's go queen C2. Let's go queen C2. I'm overthinking this. Knight to A7. I wasn't thinking that. What is going on? I just don't feel like my, I don't feel like I have my attack anymore. Hmm. Okay, let's go king h2. I want my king nice and protected. So in events of stuff happening, I can do stuff. I don't think it was smart to allow my queen to the c5 square. That is something that he should not have allowed. Now can I go into the d6 square? Ah, it looks, it looks like it. It looks like it, guys. This pawn is a past pawn. It's protected. I'm going based off of intuition here. Maybe not the best. Okay, let's play. Let's play g3. Solidify. Maybe walk my king a little closer here. I'm really not too sure if this end game is winning or not for me. Okay, but he's allowing me to take this pawn in f7 and then go to d8. Hit the pawn in e6. And I think this is just this is winning for me here. Okay, I need to think about this here. Let's go knight to d4. Control the center squares. Control the center squares here. King g2. King f3. a4 to get the pawn out of danger. And everything is nice and solid, guys. That's the important thing here. a5. Let's go knight to c2. Everything's nice and solid. Now the king comes in and kicks this knight off of this square here. Knight to e3. Hitting the pawn. Collecting it. And I should be winning the game here. The knight has no squares. Cannot play. All right. Let's go knight to e3. Takes. King to c5. King to c6. G4. 
just going to go and go ahead and take this pawn. My knight does a good job of solidifying the squares away from the king here. Knight g4 to take the pawn, guys. And my extra piece should be a meaningful winning position here. I'm going to make sure I keep this pawn defended. Knight f6. I will say he's doing a good job of being annoying. I'm not going to let him push this pawn down the board, guys. I know it looks really weird to keep the knight here, but I got four squares until I make a queen. So I just need to slow him down just for a bit. And that is a win. Very nice. I gained 40 points all the way up to two, uh, 2,223. Hey, everyone. So my audio messed up. So I'm actually uh, recording this after the fact. This is, you know, I've had a little bit of time to actually think about this game. I played it at 82% accuracy. Um, I do really like this variation. I think a lot of players don't really know what they're doing. So the pat variation, um, I will also include this in my course. I'm going to talk about both of these variations, knight takes d4 and knight bd2. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to call it something like understanding uh, the French defense, you know, how to win for white or something like this. And so how can we play a little bit better than we did in the game? I definitely made some mistakes. Uh, most of this is theory. So all of this I knew up to essentially queen to c2. So we've batteried up. We're getting ready to attack h7. This is an important way to attack the king because notice my move queen to c2 is putting pressure on h7 and I'm kind of forcing my opponent to make a weakness. This is generally what happens is something like h6 and then we play a move like queen e2 to drop the bishop back and put the queen in front. Notice the power of this concept. Um, once the queen gets to d3, it's very hard for black to play g6 because this pawn is on h6. So we've induced the weakness. We can actually use that to our advantage. So that's the whole point behind playing queen to c2 first. Our opponent willingly went g6, so I'm very happy to see that. Um, I improved my position. I went queen to d2. These all felt extremely natural. Bishop to f8. I will say, yes, my opponent is defending the dark squares, but in general, I would say that this bishop exchange favors me because, well, his dark square bishop is very important to guarding all the weak dark squares around his king, while my dark square bishop is isn't really all that isn't all that good because of this pawn on e5. So that's essentially the benefit. I like going h4. I think this is very nice. And here is where I think I made some mistake. I didn't have to immediately exchange these bishops. I don't know if that benefits me. I can always let my opponent exchange because, you know, bringing my queen to h6 is almost game over with a move like knight to g5 coming in next. So maybe I could have just started with a move like h5. That's pretty much what the engine was saying. And here, uh, I guess we could go to the review section here. Um, some of these uh, take with a grain of salt because I don't think, uh, you know, the computer really wants to do like certain moves before other moves. And really like most of these moves are very, very natural from both sides. So I captured um, and king captures h5 and queen e7. And the idea being that I went h6 and brought my queen to f4, which all felt very, very natural. My you know, the computer always wants me to play b5 first, so maybe I should have, in, I guess, this position, tossed in a move like b5, but, you know, this comes with its weaknesses as well because, you know, the pawn on a3 could be weaker, but, you know, with my queen showing up on f4, it's very hard for black, you know, to move his queen away from his king, right? So that might, been a, that might have been a better way for me to play, but the, the most important idea here to remember, guys, is that I put my knight on g5. I think this is a big mistake, positional mistake. I should have thought about trying to go to a more important square, which is the f6 square. And I do that by the very nice reroute, knight h2, knight g4, knight f6, and then pretty much you can sign my score sheet. Pretty much the game's gonna be over at that point. The knight on f6 is such a boss. It might not cause immediate game over, but I think the presence of the knight there uh, for the rest of the game is something really hard to deal with. So. We continued a couple of more moves. I pretty much lost the thread of the attack. My opponent traded light square bishops. I'm not too big of a fan of rook takes c1 because, you know, he gives me the open file with my rook. 
Um, and here, pretty much equal. I need to not like over press in this position. I think I started over pressing. My opponent let me put my queen on c5, which I don't think that was a great idea. And after knight to c6, it was actually a big mistake here. I could have captured on h7. This is a very, very interesting move. The whole point being after takes, I could play queen f8, um, kind of sliding into the position, threatening queen to g7. It's actually a winning advantage according to computer. So queen to d6 actually is a mistake. Though I should, th this is the classic uh, overpressing in a position in which you want to win, but you don't have any business winning. This is the uh, this is the overpressing move. If I wanted to press for a little bit more, maybe I should have played queen b6. But uh, the problem with this move is that I thought that my pawn is weak. Obviously, it's weak. But I felt like my pressure on these two pawns and the pawn in e6 would have caused my opponent's king to not be able to kind of leave and start trying to capture this pawn because, you know, I could capture an h7, for example. The problem with that is that my opponent plays a very good move, knight d8 defending everything and getting ready to play f6, kicking the knight, and then walking the king over to take the pawn. And this pretty much is a losing position for me. So I went too quickly. My opponent also blundered himself in time pressure with king h8. And pretty much that was all she wrote after takes takes and knight takes f7. I end up winning the uh, the e6 pawn as well by going knight d8. So this is an important idea to remember, guys. Um, you know, this idea of rerouting our pieces. And I could have definitely played better in this game, but next time I'll know. And that's the point of a game analysis. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you want your own game analyzed on the show, all you have to do, subscribe to the channel, join my Discord, and there's a section called game analysis. All you have to do is throw your game in there, just copy a link from Lee Chess or chess.com, and I will go over it on the show sometime. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, stay tuned for my French defense, um, understanding the French defense course completely for free on YouTube. And other than that, I will catch you guys on the next video.